Welcome back to the At Home with Roby show. I'm Ashley Davis along with Trent Haston. We're your hosts. We're glad you're spending your Sunday morning with us. Whether you're in the car or on the couch, you're always at home with Roby. Visit us today at andrewroby.com. That's Andrew, R-O-B-Y. Dot com. Trent, before the break, we had Adam Stevens with us. He's the president of the British International School of Charlotte. If you want to know more about them, you can call them at 704-341-3236. You can go to bischarlotte.org, get more information about them, find out how to get in touch with them. Adam, before the break, we touched briefly, and I'd like for you to expand on it because it's a great program, and it really takes your school international, and that's your association with Nord Anglia Education Worldwide. Yeah, Nord Anglia Education, as I said just previously, is a great organization, premier, uh, world's leading premier school group. Um, One of the ways in which it it impacts children in my school and the schools around the world is through the global campus. The global campus is is a way in which our students through online and in-person and in-school activities can connect with those children throughout the globe through online engagements with debating societies, with um, uh, charitable organizations and, and uh, events to raise funds to support uh, a multitude of um, uh, good causes around the world. To, to Connecting with each other on a more personal level, connecting with children in, in China and in um, in Singapore. Our children come in in the morning, and, and one of the first things they say is, when do we get to go online? Because I've got a, 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 a message out to some friends I've made from our school in, in Cambodia, and, um, and, and I'm waiting for them to respond back to me. Obviously, the time delay means that it's a little bit slower conversation. However, we do put them onto Skype with them, and that sense of a global network is really important. One of the other aspects is is in face engagements. So we have a, a centre over in Tanzania where our children go each year and they connect with each other. And and a really exciting um, new development within North Anglia Education is Juilliard. We're the only schools group in the world that has a partnership with uh, Juilliard, um, the, the 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 performing arts and music um, uh, school up in New York, and. That gives us um, the opportunity to bring the Juilliard curriculum for performing arts and music into our schools. And and here in Charlotte, we're going to be working with them next year. This year, uh, the Juilliard curriculum is in our schools in uh, Chicago and in uh, Houston and in um, Washington. And uh, very shortly, that's going to be coming to us here in Charlotte with our children engaging with that very high-level expectation and experience that comes through the Juilliard School. That's really interesting. I mean, we were talking about this last week. Uh, the way when you cross borders outside of your country and you cross language borders, it ties so well in with the other arts, you know, with music, mm-hmm. with, with dance, with theater, with, with Juilliard. Mm-hmm. I, I just think there's so much value in that. Um, so Ash was telling me in the break that you guys have a program. I have a son. He He's about to be nine months. I think he's got a couple days left. He'll be nine months old. And, and and I think he's a little man by now, little, <laughs> little Ford, little Ford. He's an F one hundred and fifty. But uh, but but y'all have a program that starts at eighteen months. Ash tells me I like to learn a little bit about it. It seems to me just just my little country self. It seems that's a little too soon to start a program for a child. Is am I missing something? Well, actually, it's a little bit too late. I mean, really, when we look at brain development. And, and in some ways, school systems haven't caught up with neurological uh, research in the way in which the brain functions. If we look at research, 85% of a child's brain structure is in place by the age of five. So by the time they're starting school, their brain is never going to function as efficiently and as effectively as it has done for the last previous five years. So getting children into a structured learning environment is absolutely critical for them. And that's not just because we have an 18-month-year-old program, I'd say that. Research continues throughout the world to point to the fact that early years education is a significant differentiator in future success. Um, um, a study done, a longitudinal study done by uh, the Perry preschool group by uh, Highscope took children from uh, who attended a high quality early years provision and, and a study group that, of children that didn't and has tracked them throughout their lives and what they can say is very categorically that the investment that you put into early years education pays dividends throughout the rest of your life um, your return on the investment is significant a, a, a more recent study um, that is um, done on uh, different countries around the world, the OECD countries around the world, by an organization called PISA, which is the um, uh, w- which looks into the attainments of 15-year-olds throughout the world. 
and they try to look for characteristics and trends about their performance. And what they noticed about students that were 15 and are performing a year to two years in advance of their peers, what did that group have in common with each other? And they were absolutely clear in identifying that er high-quality early years education was the distinctive um, common denominator between those children. Now, what that says is investment in early years definitely pays off later on in life. Um, In the study, they noticed that the United States is number one for the amount of money that it puts into its child care and early years experiences. But on the OECD countries, 34 of them, they were in the bottom group for the attainment of 15-year-olds. So they studied that a little bit further to say, why is that disparity? Because the more we invest, we should be getting more back. And what they said is that it's a lot of money going into early years child care. It's not necessarily going into high quality early years experiences. And that is absolutely critical because you need to have very skilled practitioners who really understand child development to get it right. If you're just joining us, you're listening to Adam Stevens. He is with the British International School of Charlotte. If you want to find out more, you can go to bischarlotte.org. Adam, tell us a little bit about, because you're right, that experience is different from a daycare to what you're doing with 18-year-olds. What is it that you're doing, kind of in a nutshell, that people can understand a little bit? What's the difference that you have for those kids in terms Mm -hmm. of education? Well, it's really important to recognize that children learn best when they do the things that they most enjoy. So being able to have an environment that is structured and clear in terms of your expectations of routines and behaviours. But you have to allow children to have the opportunity to to undergo what we call child-initiated learning opportunities. And that's very much through play and there are generalised interests. But it's what you bring into the field that motivates their interest. How do you bring into the classroom interesting and, and, and appropriate kinds of activities that they will be interested in? And then understanding how you play alongside, how you play as an equal partner and how you lead that play is one of the distinct differences between a highly qualified and highly experienced earliest practitioner and other people who are doing a great job in caring and looking after your children. Um, We have a rigorous program with clear expectations of progress that children will, will, will undergo across seven areas of learning. Getting the formal bits of it right, the the, um, the early literacy and early numeracy uh, development, is really a skillful art because if you get that wrong, you can actually damage children's future success. Being over-prescriptive, textbook or off-the-shelf curriculum driven is, is going to do more harm than it is going to do good. It has to be woven into children's play, woven into the relationships that you build with them, woven into their level of independence and the recognition of their interdependent uh, natures in a classroom. You know, the best way to really understand our school is to come down and visit us and just walk through our classrooms. You'll see our 18-month-year-old program. When we look at our children who have only been with us now for four or five weeks, the level of independence those children are showing, the level of autonomy that they have in the classroom, the ability to manipulate that environment to their own end is phenomenal. I'm I'm quite impressed myself. I mean... uh Sounds like a Roby training program. <laughs> it does. That's <laughs> so we're going to start the new employees, right? I'm digging British it. 18 School. months old, get on the bus. <laughs> and the, what, what I uh, what I think is great is in reading your website and talking with you is it's a very personalized approach to education for each child, right? Absolutely. I mean, I think any progressive modern education system now has to accept that gone are the days of one voice and many ears, and they're all doing the same thing. Our curriculum is very much driven by um, the journey that individual children are on. We have um, uh, every student student in my school has a personal success plan that is put together with uh, through partnership with parents and and teachers and and the child that sets goals for their their development, academic goals, personal social and learning goals, as well as enriching goals, developing those real deep scented passions in your life. What do you want to try out? Do you want to go scuba diving? Do you want to learn to ride a horse? Do you want to take up fencing? And how do we get together as a team to enable that to happen for children? And then translating that into the classroom so that children in one class We'll all be working on similar activities and collaborating together, but might be looking to achieve different goals because our curriculum isn't age-related. It's ability-related. It's not about achieving a set group of of uh, end-of-grade expectations. It's about every child being on a journey where they're learning what's next for them, and that might be very different for others. And as a result, there is no limit to what children can learn in that kind of environment. 
It's really great information. It's a great opportunity in Charlotte. I've said the phone number a couple of times. How can people get more involved with the British International School? I think one of the best ways to find out more about us is to attend one of our open houses or just give us a call and come down and visit us. You know, I think I've, I, I'm very privileged as a principal. I've walked around many, many schools around the world, and I know one thing is for certain. You know more about a school in the moment that you walk through it than you could ever glean from a web fi- website or a radio station or right. a, an advert. And you will know instantly whether this is the right school for your child because right. it will just feel right. And our school just feels right. So check it out today. It's the British International School of Charlotte, BISCharlotte.org. Call them at 704-341-3236. Go check it out. Take a tour. Check out an open house. Adam, thanks so much for being here. Thank you very much Appreciate for having it. me. You're listening to the At Home with Roby Show. We'll be right back.